Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure for me to welcome you to the Red Exchange in Oslo. And it's with great hope that uh, I see the recent development in the climate change and sustainable development agenda. The Paris Agreement ended up being more ambitious than anyone had dared to imagine. And I'm especially happy that it recognizes the roles of forests in stabilizing our climate, as do the sustainable development goals. For the first time, we have reached international agreement that there can be no sustainable future for this planet unless we protect and restore tropical forests. Tropical forest supports an impressive range of biodiversity. More than half of the world's planets and animal species, species live in rainforests. Biodiversity loss is one of the great challenges facing humanity today. When I talk about the sustainable development goals, I may often make the point that simply establishing goals will not in itself uh, uh, end extreme poverty. Action must follow promises. The same goes for deforestation. In April last year, I made a visit to the rainforest of Ind uh, Indonesia that I will never forget. On the island of uh, Sumatra, I met the Orange Rimba people. Literally, this means people in the forest. The Orange Rimba have hunted, gathered and grown what they need in the forests for centuries. The rich ecosystem of the forest has formed the basis for their culture. No, the forests they depend on are diminishing. Increasingly, they find themselves living on palm oil plantations, which provide hardly any of the ecosystem services that used to sustain them. And this story is not unique to Indonesia. On the contrary, the same story is unfolding in many tropical forests uh, country around every day. And we are here today to change this story. If it is to have a happy conclusion, we need to end deforestation. And this will only be possible if governments are involved in the process. Indonesia is an emerging yeah, as a case in point. President Jokowi has made three groundbreaking decisions not to issue any new mining or palm oil uh, permits, to protect all remaining peatlands and restore these, th those that are already damaged, and to review existing permits for forest and peatland areas. There is no time to lose. A few days ago, the United Nations Environment Program, UNEP, and Interpol revealed the uh, environmental crimes no make up the world's fourth largest crime sector, growing at two to three times the pace of the global economy. These are crimes against future generations as well as the present. They increase the fragile and the already fragile planet, the fragility and already fragile planet, and threaten to undermine states that are uh, on the way to peace and stability. And then we know that developing countries can, should not have to bear the burden of forest protection alone. Over the last years, Norway, together with partners such as Germany, the United Kingdom and the United States, has worked with forest countries, multilateral organizations, civil society and private companies to support them. This makes it possible to build capacity. One of our long-standing partners, Guyana, has shown how a nationally owned system of monitoring and reporting on forest cover can be developed to a high international standard, almost from scratch. Countries with major development challenges can be the most ambitious ones. Ethiopia plans to keep emissions at 2010 level, while becoming a middle-income country by 2025. An ambitious green economy plan will show the way. And Norway will continue to partner Ethiopia in realizing this vision. Brazil 
has demonstrated that it's possible to balance the demand for economic growth with mitigating climate change. Over a period of 10 years, Brazil reduced deforestation in the Amazon by more than 70%. At the same time, the economy grew, agricultural production in the same region increased, and poverty was reduced. There are three factors and keys that were keys to this success. Law enforcement and the, ex the extension of indigenous territories and the conservation areas in the Amazon. And the recently renewed Amazon soy moratorium, which prevents companies from selling soybeans that were produced on deforested land. State governors, forward-looking companies, indigenous people and activists from all parts of Brazil are playing a part. I'm therefore proud that uh, last year, Norway fulfilled this promise to pay 1 billion US dollars into the Amazon phone fund based on these results. And that we have agreed to extend our partnership uh, with Brazil up to 2020. <coughs> we first entered into this partnership in 2008. Norway recognizes that reducing deforestation requires long-term investment of scale. This is why my government decided to extend Norway's international climate and forest initiatives until 2030. And Brazil is not alone. Colombia is using its transition to peace as a stepping stone to green growth. Two weeks ago, Norway, Germany and the UK transferred six million US dollars in response to Colombia's achievement in reducing deforestation in 2013 and 2014. Colombia has also launched its Amazon vision program to improve livelihoods, indigenous people's rights and spatial planning in the Amazon. In this way, Colombia is showing great leadership in protecting uh, its uh, incredible biodiversity. Did you know that Colombia is home to more bird species, spices, species than any other countries in the world? I'm also confident that the, the Peruvian government will continue on its paths of including indigenous people's lands, tenure rights, and production protection strategies in the Amazon in its strategy. Liberia is seeking to keep emissions low while promoting inclusive and sustainable growth by giving rural communities a key role in forest management. This underlines a very important aspect. You cannot do this without having the people in the area with you in the process. The Democratic Republic of Congo has committed itself to stabilizing its forest cover by 2030. Luckily, the national governments are not facing the challenge alone. Local governments are also taking promised jurisdiction approaches to reduce deforestation in all main tropical forest countries. Indigenous people are showing that with secure tenure, they are the best guardians of the forest. They can simply not be a red plus without the participation of indigenous people and local communities. And the private sector is coming on board. The soy moratorium and the commitments to deforestation-free palm oil are good example. Civil society is pushing world leaders to do more, as well as promoting transparency and accountability and providing expertise. The successes we achieved in New York and Paris would not have been possible without the leadership shown by all of these groups. Today, Norway is endorsing the Amsterdam Declaration on removing deforestation from the supply chain of agricultural commodities to Europe, with a particular focus on palm oil. In this way, we are supporting the efforts of the private se sector to ensure fully sustainable palm oil supply chains by 2030. And later today, the Storting, the Norwegian Parliament, will ratify the Paris Agreement. And tomorrow, 
Norway and the United States will sign a joint statement of deeper cooperation on forest and climate change. And I'm very pleased to announce that U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry will join Minister of Climate and Environment Vida Helgesen on this event. Our forests and climate partnerships are broadening and deepening. This reflects the fact that forests pay, play a key role in mitigating climate change. Tropical forests can provide one third of the climate change mitigation needed to stay on a two degrees pathway or below over the next decades. And by protecting our forests, we are thus making a crucial contribution to climate change mitigation and to global sustainability, and ultimately to the future of humanity. Thank you. <laughs>